I will show you a tool that will make you want to replace Postman. I have been using Postman mainly for manual testing, ad hoc requests and exploring APIs. There's nothing wrong about it, but I find that it's difficult to me to stay organized and to share requests with everyone in my team. I know, maybe it's my problem. Ideally, I would like to have a way to express those requests as code in the same way that we do nowadays with infrastructure as code. The good news is that there's an awesome extension for VS Code and I want to show you the amazing things that you can do with it. Let's start by installing that extension. Go to the VS Code, open the Extensions tab and search for REST Client. Install. Once it's installed, you can start creating files that will hold the requests that you want to do to your API. You just need to create a file with the extension HTTP or REST. I have here a simple and dummy API with just a few endpoints so we can explore it using that extension. My API is running, so if I want to do a request using this method, I just need to go to that file and I paste the URL. By default, it will assume that I'm using a GET request and you can see here a contextual option that says send request that I can click it and you will see a new pane opening up on the right side with the response. By the way, you don't need to click this button. If you prefer to use your keyboard, you just go to the commands and you type send request and voila. Now, what if I want to have multiple requests on the same file? So this file is regarding my to-dos endpoints. So let's call this one to-dos, but I also want to be able to post new to-dos because if I run this one and I move myself to the other side, you can see right here that I have nothing on my storage. So I want to post them. What if I add those requests into the same file? I can do that. If I want to have multiple requests in the same file, I just need to split them using this notation. One of the advantages of this notation that I really like is that I can add text to explain what you will see here. So when you are sharing this with your team, everyone understands what that request is doing. I can simply type create to do since this will be a post. And for example, now I can go back and edit the other one that is getting the list and just say list to do's. To execute the post request, first we need to define the verb that we are invoking, so it's a post. Then we provide the endpoint, and now we can define headers, like the content type, and now you paste the payload that you want to send. And this is our request. Now I can invoke it by clicking the button once again, or if I'm positioned on that request, I can use the command to execute request and it will execute the one where I'm currently positioned. Send request and it was successful. Let's execute the list once again to see if it's in fact there, and it is. One thing that may look strange to you is the fact that here I have a post and here I'm not saying anything. As I told you, get is the default one, but you can be explicit and have it right here. Now I'm looking into this and I want to avoid this duplication of the address that you can see right here. And you can do that by using variables. So with the add sign, you are declaring a variable, you define the name, you assign the value that you want, and then with double curly braces, you can use the variable that you want, send the request and succeed it. Let's do the same to the other one. But even then it's not perfect. With Postman, one cool feature is that you can use environments and by using environments, you can find, for example, addresses, credentials for development environment, testing environment, production, quality. And on this case, I don't want to need to change this variable every single time that I'm targeting a different environment. The good news is that the REST client extension also supports the concept of environment. To do that, you need to go to your VS Code folder that you have here, go to the settings, workspace settings, and you have here this section of the REST client environment variable. There's a shared one and every single variable that you define inside here will be available on any environment. But what I want to do is to have, for example, the endpoints for dev and quality insurance. So I can simply go here, define dev, open an object. My variable will be named host and I paste here my address. Let's do the same for quality. Let's imagine the address was this one. And obviously you can do this for other environments that you want, like production or staging. On our HTTP file, now we can remove this variable and we can see here an error. Why do we have this error? Because I didn't define the environment that I want to work on and I don't have this variable on the shared ones. On the bottom of your screen, you will find this option right here that you can click and now you can select the environment that you want to, to use. So I will use dev. And when I hover the variable, you can see that is localhost 5051. Let's go to the QA and now you can see the other address that I defined. 
By the way, you can also use the system environment variables if you want. I want to show you another type of variables. What if I want to get the last one that I had based on the response from the request that I just sent? The REST client extension supports the concept of request variables. To use request variables, we need to go assign a name to the request that we want to extract the variable from. So we go to our create to do, we give it a name saying that is the create. Now we go to the get request to get a single to do and we'll declare a variable that is equal to the create, that is the name that we assign to the post request. And I go to the response to the body and this will signal that I'm using the root of that JSON that I'm finding there. And I want to get the ID from that. Now to send it on the address, I just need to go here and say that I want to use the ID. Let's see this in action. Let's type here a random number, execute. You see here that the ID is the 345. If we execute the get, you can see that the ID that was used was the 345. This is extremely useful. For example, if you are defining an authentication flow that you need to extract, for example, an access token from somewhere to use in the rest of your requests, this is quite handy. And since we are talking about authentication and authorization, let's take a look onto that. Let's go into my API. I have here a middleware that will define an authorization based on an API key. So I need to provide an adder with a given value if I want to use this API. Let me restart the API. And if I execute one of those requests, now it says that is an authorized missing API key. What I need to do, I need to provide this header with this API key that I am expecting. So if I execute now, it succeed. What if I want to move this setting out of here, but into a .env file, for example. Let's create a .env. We add the API key there. This will be our variable name. And in our requests, we need to change the variable into $env and the name of the variable that we want to get from the .env file. So if we execute now, we can see that now finally we have an OK. Let me just apply this to the other requests. So we can use the post, we can use the get, we can use all the requests now with authentication. As a bonus, let me tell you that you can go into the request that you want. You right click, generate code snippet, and you pick the language that, that you want. There's a lot of them. For example, let's say that we want C Sharp. It will ask you if you want to use the request by using REST Sharp or directly through the HTTP client. And voila, you have here a sample of the source code that you need to do that request. And obviously I can add this to my repository be part of my pull requests, have my team reviewing it. I can see the history of it. That's amazing. If you like what I showed you, make sure you share this video with your team. It will be a good way to evangelize them to use this tool. And let me know in the comments what you think about it. And by the way, I have this video right here about a tool that is really useful for a .NET developer. I will see you soon. And in the meanwhile, keep it simple.